Hey guys, Cliff Gray here. Today I'm going to go over slings, sling attachments, and then also how to pack your rifle um, on your pack uh, during a mountain hunt. All right, so I'm going to keep it brief and to the point, and uh, we'll uh, get started. Okay, so first thing I'll go over attachments. So on a traditional hunting rifle, this is the type of attachment you're going to see almost, uh, almost all the time, okay? These are going to be... Uh, this type of attachment here is going to be in wooden stocks, synthetic stocks, whatever. Uh, most of your traditional rifle setups are going to have this type of setup, all right? On the, the forearm and on the butt of the rifle, all right? And the type of attachment that goes into those mounts for a sling are one of these right here, all right? So how these work is that you have a tension spring here. So you have that to push first, then you have to push this over, okay? And then slide it out, all right? Lot, some people call these a three-way attachment because a lot of them, and I'll show you on the other rifle, a lot of them, before you push this piece right here, you actually have to you actually have to unthread a screw that's right here, okay? So that's one, pushing's two, and then turning the swivel off is three. Alright? So here on this rifle I'll show you. It's got it's got the same exact type of attachment, but this section here, right here, has to be threaded off a little bit, then you can push it, then you can you can turn your swivel here and detach, okay? So that's your most traditional setup on rifles, and it's, it's a good setup. I don't, I don't see any you know, big, big negative uh, on it. Um, it's inexpensive, reliable. Probably the only con that somebody's gonna mention is that these, these type of setups are kind of a one-way deal, right? There's not a swiveling aspect, right? So depending on how you carry your rifle, sometimes, um, that that could be a negative just because the angle is limited right and then here here in this this other clip here i'll show i'm showing you a uh, a close-up of a swivel type of attachment and that's a quick you know that's a quick detach you're going to see that attachment more on like ar platforms um kind of sporting rifle setups but it's becoming a little more common on traditional uh, hunting rifles, so that's another option for you too. And a lot of those quick, uh, quick detach uh, swivel uh, setups, um, they have 360 degrees rotation. So if you're, you know, if you're carrying your rifle a certain way, or, or you tend to carry it on your chest or something like that, which is not real common in uh, in hunting scenarios. But if you do do that often, you might want to have that swivel off to the side or just have a little more flexibility with the, the sling swiveling. Just so you know, some people are going to view that as a negative, so you might have to try it out. A lot of people don't like their, their swing or their sling swiveling um, because then you're going to end up with twists in your sling. But just depends on what your, what your preference is. Okay, and so the other thing uh, I'll talk about real quick is the setups I just showed you um, or the traditional setup I just showed you is generally going to be screwed into the stock. Um, sometimes they're screwed in and then they're epoxied so they don't they don't swivel at all. But basically, you've got the, the same setup. Um, what I've moved to a lot of my rifles to um, my hunting rifles is just a short Picatinny rail setup. Okay, and so this this little rail here actually has one of those a uh, built-in traditional uh, uh, sling attachment here so that works but these picatinny rails they let you have a lot more flexibility in terms of if you want to try the swivel attachment if you want to have um, a bipod on your rifle but you don't want it to interfere with the with the sling those sort of things those little picatinny rail uh, uh, additions to your <coughs> forearm are, are going to be a nice addition you know the trick to them is generally what you're going to have to do on like a stock that you purchase you know, uh, aftermarket stock or a st the stock that comes with your rifle, particularly if it's a composite um, stock, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take out that traditional mount and then get your rail. You're going to be able to use the one hole 
that was already in the stock for the traditional um, mount. You're going to use that, but you're going to need another hole and another attachment. So you've got, you know, you've got uh, lateral uh, attachment to the rifle. You don't got the bottom of the rail hanging out and unsupported. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to drill your stock and then probably epoxy it, particularly if it's uh, composite, all right? So you have a solid attachment. But that is a nice, um, a nice addition. Like I said, I'm moving most of my hunting rifles uh, to that setup, all right? But again, personal preference and kind of, you know, how much flexibility you, you want. There's not a lot of additional cost to having those Picatinny rails on there and they give you a fair amount of flexibility. All right, guys, so now I'll show you a couple actual sling slings that I recommend. Um, First one is more traditional, right? Like this is gonna be what you see on a lot of rifles. Um, this, this is one that's a synthetic material. It's got a little padding and then just a synthetic strap, right? Attaches at two spots. Pretty, you know, pretty straightforward. Walmart sells them, Cabela sells them, everybody sells them. And that padding's nice. Uh, they take a little time to adjust. They just have, you know, traditional kind of buckling on them, all right? There are some nice uh, leather ones that, that uh, are the same type of setup. Um, I don't tend to use leather ones in the mountains just because I don't want to have to maintain uh, the leather. Okay. Um, and then some of them have uh, different, different levels of padding, right? Some of them have just a nice little pad like this. Some of them have a bigger pad and then they'll have a, split, a place to put a couple extra uh, rounds. Um, and that's, you know, that's handy. Seems kind of a little hokey, but to be honest, like it is, Nice to have some rounds accessible when for whatever reason you've got your, your extra rounds in your pack buried or whatever. It is nice to be able to just pull them off, off of there. All right. That just goes over your, I mean, that's going to be your traditional carry with that, with that sling. All right. Widely available. Um, most people are going to like them and very traditional, right? All right, guys. So another sling that you're going to see, it's a little less common on traditional hunting rifles. Um, I do run it on, on a, a few of my, my guns, and uh, that's a, that, it's the same deal in terms of attachment. It's a two-point attachment, but instead of the, uh, the traditional buckling for adjustment, it has a quick, a quick adjustment loop, okay? And I like that just because I don't have to take buckles apart whenever I'm going to put, whenever I want to just simplify my, uh, my sling situation. Like, I can make it real tight like that, okay? And when the, when the sling is really tight like that, it's easier to fit into a scabbard. Um, it's, it's, there's less shit hanging off whenever you're going to strap it to a backpack or whatever. So I, I do like that. And these slings are very, it's very easy to lengthen them, right? Okay. What you're going to find is on, on hunting rifles, they're, they're a little bit, they're not as quick to tighten. See, like I can't tighten them. So generally what you're going to have to do is grabbing here and tighten them like that, right? Still way faster than the traditional sling, but there is a little trick to it. And it's just the physics of the rifle. But you're, and the reason I mention that is because these slings, um, you know, the military guys use them, guys with ARs use them quite often. And on those rifles, just the, the physics of how they're set up, you can go out and in relatively quickly. Most hunting rifles, and it's just because the, there's a there's a different you know there's a different uh, style and, and model of forearm. You're gonna have to just kind of feed it down, right? But it's still super quick. All right. So I kind of prefer these. Um, the only negative uh, to them because of the the quick adjustment loop and how it works, you can't really get one with a good pad on it. Okay. They make some variations that do have a little pad. But the problem is you're going to give up some of that flexibility and it kind of, it's kind of in the way. So the only negative that I see for, on them is that you're kind of, you're kind of missing out on that, that little shoulder padding here, okay? But outside of that, they have a lot more utility than your, than your, standard, uh, your standard sling, okay? All right, guys, so I've thrown my backpack on. This is the pack that I use on a lot of my, my mountain hunts. And the reason I've done that is whenever you talk about slinging and carrying a rifle on mountain hunts, you're, the, all the complexity comes from the fact that you're wearing a pack, okay? So the first scenario you have to be prepared for is when you're actually hunting, all right? So when you go in and you've backpacked in uh, for a hunt, generally you're gonna be carrying the same, the same pack when, out when you're daily hunting, even if you're not planning on moving camp that day. 
So you're going to have a big, you know, a big like Kafaru pack or some other uh, type of backpacking pack uh, on you while you hunt, okay? So you need to be able to carry your rifle on that pack so you can effectively hunt, okay? Then, kind of the interim scenario is you're moving camps, but you're also hunting, right? So in that case, you got to be prepared for the fact you got a lot of weight in your pack, um, but you still want to be prepared to take a shot, okay? And then really the second scenario is when you're packing out, right? So you're either, uh, you know, you're packing out with a full camp, right? And you're not really hunting anymore, um, or you're packing out with a full camp and a harvested game animal, right? So now you've got all your gear, you've got a goat in your pack or sheep in your pack or big mule deer or something like that, but you still gotta deal with that rifle, all right? So hopefully this will give you a good overview. Um, you know, nothing's perfect in this regard, all right? Um, so we'll, we'll uh, go through each stage and I'll kind of show you what I found works and you'll, you'll build up your own system from there, all right? So first let's go over where I need to have my gun handy. If I need to have my gun handy, there's a couple ways I can do it, you know? The traditional way to do it is to just, just carry it like you would otherwise, right? Just, just slung over one side. So this is generally impractical uh, for most mountain hunts, okay? Most guys can't deal with it because what happens is it'll keep sliding. It'll keep sliding off one side, you know? And a lot of times you'll have, a, you have your walking stick on one side or if you've got two trekking poles, this, this rifle sling is gonna slide, okay? It's gonna slide off here and it's gonna drive you crazy. The, uh, the other issue that's gonna arise, and this is, just, this is just a reality of having your gun accessible while hunting, is you're gonna end up with some pain just because you know a six, seven, 10 pound, 12 pound rifle on one side of you versus all the other weight you're carrying on your back, it's gonna be problematic, okay? That part I can't really help you with. You just kinda gotta, gotta deal with it, but I can show you some tricks on how to safely carry the rifle where you're not dealing with the sling constantly pushing off and going off the side of your shoulder. And it'll help a little bit on the weight because it's gonna keep that weight centered for you too. All right, so if I have the rifle here, one method that you can do is I actually, you can probably see here, is you can take a, like a, uh, this is a tech lock right here that you can attach uh, different items to, to molly on your pack or whatever. But I can take a tech lock like that and I can just use it as a stop, okay? So I can just pop my sling over it like that, all right? So now it's a stop for that sling. And that right there, even just the corner, but if I can get where it's straight, you know, I've got the tech lock over my sling. And that's, you know, that's keeping the weight somewhat centered and the rifle's still very accessible. I don't have to fight that strap, keep trying to pull it off, see? It's not, this, this rifle's not gonna slip off my shoulder, all right? So that's one option. And then of course, you, this is relatively, I mean, you just hold the butt of your gun, pop it off, and you've got, got it, right? And you'll get a system where it fits in there pretty well. And one thing that you're seeing here, and this is something I just kinda recommend, if you carry water on your waist belt, and you're gonna always be carrying your gun on that side, move the water bottle to the other side. You can see it, it'll affect your, your rifle quite a bit, particularly if you have a scope on your gun, okay? So that's something to think about uh, there, but you know, you've got this. They actually make, there's some guys that make little round like attachments that do the same thing as this, all right? It, you know, or is the same idea. Basically it's stopping that sling from, from falling off uh, your shoulder, okay? So that's, uh, that's one way to hold a rifle while you're hunting. And it's, and you know, the, the advantage, obviously it's simple, inexpensive, you know, a tech lock or those other little devices that go on your shoulder, um, they're like 15 bucks. The nice thing about a tech lock is when you're, when you're not using it, you could use it for something else, right? But you're like talking about a $15, $20 investment to solve that problem. And of course your rifle's handy, it's, you know, it's quick to get still. Um, the only thing is it's not, I wouldn't say it's like super secure, all right? And you know, the weight is still, is still somewhat of an issue, all right? So I'll show you a couple other options. One, you can use Kafaru's gun bearer. So I have it on this, on this pack right now set up. You can see here's the, the butt part of it, okay? So that holds the butt of your rifle, okay? Snug it in there, you're good to go there. And then here, 
There's an attachment. Ignore the, you wouldn't run both of these things, so you can ignore the tech lock on there. I just got it on there for demonstration purposes to show you both. The gun bearer's got this extra little strap here, okay? And so this is kind of a quick release strap. You go around the forearm of your gun, and you can tighten that up, okay? And that's a hands-free solution, right? You don't, you don't have to deal with the, the rifle falling off your side. The weight is somewhat centered, uh, so there's a little improvement there. And then, of course, some of the weight is in the, is in the butt pouch here. You don't solve it that much. And like I said, you're, you're not going to solve it completely um, <clears throat> because the rifle's on one side of you, right? And that's just you're hunting, and so you need to have the rifle accessible, so it's going to be like that. So that's a nice, a nice setup. The, the one, the big negative that I see with this, if you're climbing through the rocks, it's still out in front of you. So if you're, if you're kind of leaning forward, scrapping through screen and stuff, the rifle can end up in your way. You know, if you've got to kind of maneuver through some, some <clears throat> boulder, you know, this kind of shit or whatever, you might find that your rifle pops, you know, can pop boulders like this, right? And so that's a little tricky. It, it has a little, little flop to it. And that's just the function of how, how this works, okay? The huge benefits is it's handy to get, right? Basically, you grab the forearm, pop this quick release, and you've got your rifle handy, all right? Same deal, remove this water bottle, it's, it's in the way. Um, but for demonstration purposes, I was, I was lazy, I suppose. But if you're gonna carry it in a gun bearer, get, it, get that out of the way, and you, it, it's, it's really slick, okay? Um, on the... Uh, on the quick attachment strap here, be really careful when you attach it. I kind of recommend that you attach it, you know, while you have your pack on and then while you're standing, okay? Because you can, you can visually see everything. And then here, I'll show you. So right here, guys, this tab, you want to make sure it's fully locked down, all right, and snaps, okay? So it holds the forearm of the gun. What I've found, if you try to put your gun on your pack, before you throw the pack on, a lot of times that can come loose, okay? And what you end up with when you pick your pack up, the, the gun's forearm and barrel will slam down. I've had that several times. You know, it, it's kind of a frightening thing. So just be conscientious of that. It's not a fault of the, of the Kafaru gun bearer. It's, it's user error for sure, but it's just something to be conscious of because it's pretty easy to do, okay? So just, just realize that. It's a function of the engineering that makes makes it uh <coughs> it makes it easy to get your rifle out of a gun bearer okay so that's a pretty slick setup Re a good one if it, you need the rifle to be real real accessible